Hey everyone, we are live. Uh, welcome to the stream today. My name is Brian Robinson. I am a developer relations specialist uh, here at Sanity.io. Uh, we're going to be doing some cool community spotlight stuff today. Uh, but if you're joining and you're not overly familiar with Sanity, be sure to check us out at Sanity.io. We're a platform for structured content. Uh, we've got a hosted backend, a cool open source editor for your uh, for your clients and for for your editors. Uh, my name is Brian. Like I said, Devrel here at Sanity. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit more about that. We're going to have a little bit more about how the streams are going to happen uh, going forward here because we've got a lot of cool stuff planned uh, for the next few months. Um, uh, apparently, awesome. Um, I've just been told that I'm left channel only, which unfortunately is not something I can fix without stopping the stream. So today, we're going to have me in mono for this, and I apologize for that. And we are going to be fixing that for a future stream. Um, and then uh, this is what we're calling a community spotlight. Uh, this actually was a site that was posted uh, in our Slack community, uh, which you can go to slack.sanity.io. And there's also a link down below the video if you're viewing this on Twitch itself today. Uh, so you can find out more about that. You can come chat with a whole bunch of people who were super excited about Sanity, not just the Sanity team itself, but um, numerous, numerous people talking about it and on a regular basis. Lots of cool stuff happening there. Be sure to come check it out, chat with us, do all sorts of stuff like that. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do more of this style of stream in the future. My goal personally is to get a couple of these every month. Uh, so if you're making cool stuff, be sure to post it over in the, we have an, a channel called the I Made This Channel. Uh, and then we can talk about like getting a stream going and, and talking through what you're working on as well. We're also going to be doing some other stuff here on Twitch, some live coding. Uh, we're going to hopefully be talking about some of our guides that are on sanity.io uh, and walking through those live on stream. I think that's going to be really, really interesting. And also, if you have any other uh, ways you'd like to see live video content from Sanity, like we're all ears. Come hang out in the Slack community. You can find me on there as well. Um, and we'll, we'll figure out all sorts of cool stuff to do, uh, together with the community, as well as, uh, streaming some content from, uh, Sanity developers and the DevRel team, uh, at Sanity. Uh, so today we've got a really cool website, uh, again, posted on the, I made this channel on the Slack, uh, community on the Sanity.io land community. Uh, it's, uh, from, we got Mike Wags that's going to be talking to us today. He's from a, a company called Self-Aware Studio. We're going to talk a little bit about that. It is the MIT Digital Humanities website, which is A, just a cool thing that MIT has going on. Like I wish I'd had that when I went to, uh, went to university as well. But uh, we're going to talk through like a whole bunch of stuff and what went into making it, working with the client, all that good stuff. If you have any questions along the way, uh, be sure to post them over in chat. I'll be paying attention to that. A couple other Sanity folks are hanging out in the chat today as well to make sure that we catch all that. So I'll keep an eye on it while Mike's talking with us. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, so I'm hoping Mike is re ready. I'm going to go ahead and move us on over, and we're going to just kind of chat. How's it going, Mike? How are you doing today? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm doing great. Getting, getting the streaming going is just getting me super excited. So, uh, so tell us a little bit about, about you, about self-aware, all that, all that good stuff. Sure. Uh, so I'm Mike. Um, I live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, so if you hear any car alarms, you know, jackhammers, anything of that nature, that's why. Um, I'm a designer and a developer um, and also co-founder of Self-Aware. Um, founded Self-Aware with my partner, Jennifer, after meeting uh, in college in Boston. Um, started Self-Aware soon after graduating. Um, and we're really focused on making, uh, designing and building websites. Um, and we want to make websites that strike a balance between accessible and experimental. And we also really strive to bring the same level of thoughtfulness into both the front end and customer facing experience, as well as the content management experience for the client. And shout out to Sanity for unlocking that and making that super fun and easy. Awesome. Um, so yeah. so I, I would ask you just a quick follow up, like bordering between accessible and experimental. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like what's, what's that mean? Yeah, so I guess um, I think something that got me really into web development, it, web development initially and website design as well was seeing all of the interactions and animations that you see on some websites. And um, what I discovered was that a lot of times sites that are heavily animated aren't super accessible. Um, so what I've kind of focused on and what we focus on as a studio is trying to find a balance where we can make an accessible site and show that it's possible to do some fun animation work 
um, some fun interactions and keep things accessible in the process. Awesome. Very, very cool. So, uh, so let's talk a little bit about the actual website as a whole. So uh, walk us through kind of the beginning parts of where you got MIT, what they were looking for, what they wanted out of a, out of a site and all that. Yeah, sure. So I guess um, backing up a little bit, uh, when I when we first heard about this project, we didn't know what the, we didn't know anything about the the field of digital humanities, um, but was was actually super interesting. So basically, digital humanities is uh, an entire field, um, not just exclusive to MIT. Um, there's programs at a lot of other universities and beyond, um, like an academic world as well. And it's this idea of using state of the art digital tools to enrich education and research in the humanities. Um, so specifically at MIT, the aim is to build like an infrastructure to kind of bridge the gap between the humanities that exists at MIT and the unmatched technical and design expertise around MIT. Very cool. Yeah. So, and, and in my opinion, one of the coolest parts of the, the MIT program in digital humanities is the, the lab, which is a undergraduate research opportunity. So students can actually participate in real um, DH projects um, and essentially like faculty members will bring an idea and research and the students get to spend a semester designing and building some kind of web experience around it. Um, and so they're doing a lot of things with like data visualization and really getting their feet wet in both front end and back end, even doing design. Um, and I think they actually get paid for those out for those semesters. So it's like, honestly, super cool. I wish I was able to do something like that in undergrad. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of the client, um, they came to us looking for a refreshed visual identity and a landing page. Um, and they really wanted to, they wanted the brand and site to show that they're a leader in the D digital humanities field, uh, but still welcoming and community oriented and taking both the humanistic and digital sides of the identity seriously. Uh, and in general for the site, people visiting the site would be looking for general information, um, they're going to want to browse and find information around current and past projects, learn about the mission and goals, and also see current and former project members and staff. Um, they also do some events. So they, some people might be coming to the site to look specifically for information about upcoming events. And then also other researchers in the field outside of the MIT ecosystem might actually want to find the GitHub repositories for some of the projects that they work on, um, view the code, maybe use it themselves and contribute potentially as well. Awesome. And, and how, how often uh, was the client kind of anticipating needing to edit their content? Like, was this going to be a fairly regular thing? Obviously with events, they probably have quite a few. Yeah, that's a good question. So I think with, um, with the pandemic, I think they're having less events, sure. <laughs> but um, I think like it's usually on like a semesterly basis that they're, um, revealing new projects and sharing those. Um, and there's also like a faculty spotlight section on the site that they could update more frequently if they chose to. I got you. Cool. So let's, let's talk a little bit about the tech. So, uh, the two things I think we're going to talk about most today are probably sanity. Obviously we're on a sanity stream, but also, uh, this is written in 11 right? So yes. what, what, uh, what brought you to these, to these two technologies? Why did you decide to use them? Uh, have you been using them in the past? Yeah. So um, starting with Sanity, uh, kind of adopted Sanity around sometime in the middle of last year, I think. Um, and I kind of remember looking through the documentation and kind of just like nodding along and being really kind of like mind blown how like well designed and intuitive everything yeah. was. And I feel like I was already sold on it. And then I got to the section about Grok and I was like, wow, this, is, this really seals the deal. <laughs> um, so for this client in particular, I think it was a really easy sell. The client team are programmers themselves, mm -hmm. and they were already somewhat familiar with the concept of, you know, the Jamstack, static, static site generation, headless CMSs, and other things like along those lines. So I think in this in this particular project, something that really stood out is the fact that a lot of um, the tools around Sanity are open source. Of course, the entire Sanity Studio being an open source React app, yeah. and then Grok and Portable Text being like open source specs. Um, and I really feel like that really aligned with the ethos and sensibilities of the client. So it was a, it was a great and easy choice. And then for 11 D, I feel like coming from a kind of a WordPress background personally, um, we would work with a framework called Timber, 
that enabled you to write Twig templates in WordPress. And um, on that note, wanted to give a quick shout out to Upstatement, which is a design studio in Boston who who wrote Timber for WordPress, and they also referred us this project with MIT. Nice. So thank you, Upstate. <laughs> so thanks, Upstatement, for Timber and this awesome project. <laughs> um, so, anyways, I had gotten building sites with twi with tw uh, Twig templates in WordPress land, and then like Vanilla JS for some of the things that we do in a lot of our projects, like page transition animations and other interactivity. So then, when starting to vet options for how it's going to work with the Jamstack and how it's going to use Sanity, uh, it was sort of like between Gatsby and Eleven D. And I super love React, um, but I will say that I feel like with Gatsby, I don't have that full control over the output. 11D is a little more bare bones, mm -hmm. less out of the box, and gives me 100% control of what JavaScript is used and how the site is built. Um, so I really like that aspect of it. And I also think that there's really something to, to be said for the simplicity of 11D, um, because I feel like some new developers might think they need to learn React and Gatsby to start working with Sanity or the Jamstack in general. But I think 11D really opens that door with a lot less to learn up front. You know, really just like install Node and run a command and you're using 11D. You've so got your, like your index.html and you can just have that like output one include and you're done. You, you're, you have an 11D exactly. site. Yeah, like when I first started web development, I feel like I was using Jekyll just so I could include like partial templates. Yep. And that was like the only reason I was using it. Um, and I didn't really even quite understand the other capabilities of it. But so even just that is kind of like opening a lot of doors, I think, for new, like maybe more beginner developers to get into the Jamstack. Yeah. And I, I personally, like my, my, my Jamstack story started with Jekyll. And then I was like, you know, I'd really like to write JavaScript instead of Ruby. Oh, by yeah. the way, there's this 11D thing now. And that got me super excited about 11D just kind of in general. Um, so cool. So why don't we uh, why don't we move things over and we'll start doing some screen sharing. You can kind of walk us through some of the things in, in this kind of custom studio, some of the things in the in the code base. Let me get that changed over. All right. Hey, look at that. So uh, if if you were watching at the beginning, you might have seen me scrolling through this in our kind of live stream. But let's take a look at the actual uh, actual site live. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So totally. So just real quick, just real quick before, before diving into the diving studio. Into the studio. Um, yeah, um, I guess yeah, I guess you've been seeing this in the little intro, intro, intro video, um, but, um, um, but um, you know, this site, you know, this site is really, really quite simple. Quite simple. It's one scrolling page, scrolling page with some, with some sort of like sort of like modals for project details. Project details. Um, um, a little carousel, little carousel here, for here for projects, projects. and some and of the kind of values of the programs here, and then. You know, the faculty spotlight that I mentioned here is another mm -hmm. modal. You can write more information about a particular faculty member. And then all of the people that are involved. Um, and something cool about this section is that after we finished the site, I think it was back in maybe like March or April, mm -hmm. um, we actually like, you know, handed off all the code to the client. And that repo is actually public um, if you want to take a look at it. And since then, the client has actually like extended some of the fields in Sanity and added some new um presentation to the way that some of these um, people are uh, presented. So I think that's kind of cool that I think that's a testament to sanity and how intuitive it is that the client was able to jump in and make some changes. That, that kind of terrifies me a little bit though. Who clients jumping into the code, <laughs> making changes, but my agency totally. heart will yeah. still a little bit after that. <laughs> yeah. Luckily they're, they're programmers themselves, like I said before. So I feel like pretty comfortable giving them the keys. Um, and like I said, there's these events here as well. And then this little community accordion. Mm -hmm. And uh, another example is there was another section here actually for publications, but they're holding off on public on sharing those um, for a bit. Mm -hmm. But so it was nice that they were able to just re remove that section pretty easily. And they made some edits to the footer as well out of this image yeah. here so, um, and a field for it in Sanity as well. If you can scroll back up, because so, there's a part that I, I don't know if anyone noticed, but scroll back up to where there's the um, like the three promo area that like they, they rotate through them because it's like a really slick interaction. Oh, I right. really dig that interaction. Right. Yeah. Like I, yeah. So basically we're using. Yeah. I didn't catch that on my, right. on my first look through on that, that like that, that underline is actually ticking through and like that's the timer. I love that interaction. Right. Yeah. And we also... Um, like kind of pause the timer once you start interacting with it. So that way Beautiful. Yeah. it doesn't advance and, you know, interrupt your reading of the actual content here. Yeah. Love it. Um, so yeah. So in sanity here, this is the, this is the studio. 
um, really simple, um, using some emojis here for icons, which is super fun. Mm -hmm. um, kind of evokes tools like Notion or Dropbox, and I feel like it feels familiar and fun yeah. to clients. I definitely get that Notion feel um, of having those icons over there, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, so yeah, this site is really simple in terms of the content model. It's really um, mostly just this landing page, like kind of singleton uh, document um, that's sort of matches the structure of the landing page itself. Um, those, that carousel that I mentioned, there is a setting here to set the duration of how long it takes for each slide to autoplay. Nice. Um, so it's fun to be able to give some, I don't know, configuration options for how like front end components work. Um, pretty straightforward stuff here. We have a reference here to this faculty spotlight document type. And then we are referencing the, the person document type here for all these different people mm -hmm. um, in, in the different sections. There's this accordion section, which is an array of accordion item objects, and then all the footer content here, which, as I mentioned before, the client was able to add this Mellon logo in really easily. So that's cool to see. Yeah. Cool. I just want to double check real fast. So uh, David Darns, real fast, can, can you hear me? I'm seeing my mic being picked up. I just want to make sure that, that I'm coming through there. But go ahead and, and continue, Mike. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, and then in people, something fun is um, we have the ability to, depending on which um, category you select, we did some like conditional stuff with a custom input, input component. Um, this is another section where the client added some fields here. So I'm not familiar. I'm not sure exactly what sequence and some of this stuff is being used for, but again, really cool that they were able to jump in and do that, especially in a section that was using like a custom input component and kind of really quickly dive in and wrap their head around what was going on in the code to add these fields. Um, cool. Let's see what else we have here. Um, yeah, and then with with events and projects, pretty sim pretty similar and pretty simple. Title, slug, some metadata. Uh, image, um, as well as some editorial text. Um, same thing, with, pretty much the same thing with projects here. And also the ability to select a semester, a year, and also an array of links. Um, so they could link out to the live project, the GitHub repo, and whatever else they may want to link out to for each project. There's actually been a couple people already in chat that, that are that are very intrigued by those conditional uh, those conditional fields. So we'll definitely want to take a look at that when we dive into the code. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, so I, I can hop into code now, actually. Um, Perfect. So I have, yeah, I have this open here. Hopefully the font size is big enough. So yeah, pretty much, you know, the, the setup with Sandbean 1110 um, that we've been using is using Yarn workspaces to do a basic mono repo. Um, so that we have our studio here, which is like pretty much just a basic, you know, clean sanity studio um, with a few small additions for um, the Netlify widget, which actually I can show you real quick here in the dashboard. You can see that um, the client can monitor builds yep. and see when changes have been successfully deployed. We do have a, a webhook that's triggering um, Netlify builds when content is published. Awesome. And yeah, and just like desk structure here, um, and then our our schema here is, is really simple. Just importing our documents, and objects, and coming in here with all of them. And I can show yeah, I'll show that uh, conditional stuff. So the conditional field is a little bit limited, um, but it works really well in this use case. So as far I don't fully understand how it works. I kind of it kind of uh, came to be as a result of some posting in the help channel on the Sanity Slack. And I got some help and there were some other people that were really keen on making this work. Mm -hmm. um, so the way that it works essentially is that down here for this title field, which is only required for staff and steering committee people, we can basically set the input component to conditional field. And then within our options, we can uh, pass a condition fun function, which essentially just like filters. Um, so it's like you return true or false when you want the field to display. So in this case, we're passing in the document 
like the document is just passed in by default and then you can access fields on the document. Um, so the limitation here is that like if you wanted a conditional field within like, let's say an object that's being used within an array, mm -hmm. I still couldn't figure out how to get that to work. But um, at least in this use case, well, and, it works. And Knut's saying in, in chat right now that, that we are working on some, some actual you know, bona fide support for conditional fields at some point. That, that is something that is coming, but we want to do it like, you know, the, the right way. So we're, we're working on Amazing. that. Yeah, that's really good to hear. I feel like that's probably the only major missing thing right now. But, you know, the fact that we can just build it ourselves, you know, just is a testament to how extend, extendable sanity is. Yeah, it's handy. Um, and then this, you know, here is the, the client was able to add this sequence field and his lab alum, they were able to add some of the, these fields in. It seems like it was self-explanatory enough and or the documentation was solid enough. They were able to figure it out. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Yeah, and then the desk structure. Um, we're passing in these emojis for the icons. Um, I'm not sure if this emoji, this React emoji thing is really necessary, but currently using it. <laughs> huh. um, and just set the font size to make the icons a little bigger. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's really the, the extent to the studio. Um, Nothing like super crazy special going on here. Yeah. Um, so, and that's what I love about it. You know, we were, we were able to put together that content model in probably less, probably less than a day. Awesome. Get it all going. Let, let's, uh, let's pause for a second. I'm going I'm to shout out to chat here. I'm going to say, um, who in chat has used 11D? So, so we know kind of exactly what to talk about in the 11D part of the stream. And then who has used... 11D paired with Sanity, if nothing else, gone through maybe our starter on sanity.io slash create or anything like that. So just so we can kind of like tailor what we're talking about in the 11D portion, uh, give a shout out, let us know what all's going on there. But you can go ahead and, and dive on in, Mike, while we wait on that. Cool. Yeah, so then the other um, workspace within the mono repo is the front end, which is under the web folder, um, which is, um, you know, primarily the only stuff in here that's like specific to 11D is our 11D config here, this templates directory, and then this data directory. Um, in the 11D configuration, we've added some, some you know, useful short codes. Um, so if you're not familiar with 11D, it has this concept of short code, so you can easily add functionality into your templates. So for example, here we're doing something sort of clever with um, you know, kind of getting the hashed file name from a Webpack manifest and um, allowing, uh, you know, those kind of um, those file names to be referenced in our templates. Mm -hmm. So let me pop in on it. over here. You'll see that I am just passing Webpack asset and then the entry name, the entry point name here. Uh, so just like little things like that, being able to to extend 11D in this way to support a more custom build environment is really cool. Um, and then of course, here's a little like debug util that I use, just like renders a uh, pre-tag um, and then like stringifies whatever JSON is passed in. Mm -hmm. So that way as I'm developing, I can just like really easily see the, the structure of the data that I'm working with. Yeah. And yeah, and here's like, you know, for the image URLs, Got a URL for short code and some other useful utilities, setting up some custom file names for 11D. And then going into the data. So what's really cool about 11D is that it has this idea of global data files. And so you can just create a file um, in your data directory that's specified here in this case. Um, and whatever it's named, what, and whatever you export from that file will then be available under that name in your templates. So in this case, we're doing a lot of uh, sanity queries and getting all the data we need to render the site. Um, so for, for things like the landing page, we have like a, a little bigger Grok query uh, just to like really get everything uh, as easy to work with as possible on the front end. Um, and something fun that we came up with here is this little all blocks to HTML, <laughs> <laughs> um, which is probably not 
the best choice for a bigger project with like a lot of different types of, um, I don't know, rich text objects. But in this case, it's so simple. So I was able to include our serializer here and bring in the block content HTML package from Sanity mm -hmm. and basically walk through the JSON until I find an object that has a type of rich text and then return it to HTML for that. Um, so that just saves me some time. I can see how that would be really, um, really handy for, for smaller projects, definitely. Seriously, yeah, seriously. So I just kind of wrap the the return JSON with this all blocks HTML function. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then in the templates, um, you'll see here, like, you go into our index, I'm just accessing all the landing page data via that landing page keyword that we kind of set through this landing page data file. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really just, from my perspective, just so effortless to get to plug in a CMS to a static site um, and really, really love working with it. And I think ever since I've sort of standardized this approach a little more through um, a repo template, it's uh, increased like the speed and like quality, I think, of development by so much. Yeah. And so one, one thing to note, because I know a couple people have said in chat that they haven't used 11D or they're just getting started with 11D. 11D is a very, very um, low... You don't have to use a live 11D to get a lot out of 11D. Uh, and so you can see uh, here, like Mike is using liquid templates. You can see all those file extensions in his file tree, but 11D actually comes with a whole bunch of other template engines as well. So if you want to use handlebars, it's there. If you want to use Nunjux, it's there. There's a whole bunch of different things kind of bundled and ready for use uh, in there as well. Yeah, and on that note, I've seen some really cool things being done. There's also the ability to write your templates in JavaScript, like sort of like template strings. Mm -hmm. And with that, people have, I've seen a repo where someone was using Preact to render um, all of their templates um, like to a string mm -hmm. and then hydrate that, hydrate specific components on the client side. So that was pretty nuts. It was almost like a mini Gatsby yeah. or something with Preact. So I, I've also heard tell cool to that, see what uh, people are coming up with. Yeah, I've, I've heard tell that Zach, uh, the the creator of Eleven, Zach Leatherman, is working on some view stuff as well. So that should be. Uh, oh, and oh, cool. of course, Knut is like at mind melding in chat with me. He just mentioned that in chat as well. So yeah, like that's nice. that's coming too, which is really exciting. Amazing. So yeah, so that um, is really the, the kind of like nuts and bolts of the sanity 11d combination um the other stuff in here is like more specific to like self-aware projects so including like a really basic so i'll actually show um let's go over here so this is the repo template that we use now um and it's like the most up-to-date here um you can you know when i, when I start a new project um if i'm using sanity and 11 which i've been striving to do on most projects. Um, I can click use this template and start a new project and get started really quickly. And what's nice about the way this works is I could easily start prototyping in the 11D directory and then hook up Sanity later on. It's not like it, you know, this repo depends on Sanity to work. Um, so it's kind of nice to have that flexibility. You can um, bootstrap early on and then bring the additional features you need later. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and so in this con in this uh, repo template, I've also added like the Netlify dev environment, which enables you to write um, server like Netlify functions out of the box. Um, there's nothing in here now, but um, you could easily add one or two or three. <laughs> and as I was just <laughs> saying, is we've included like some of the kind of like boilerplate JavaScript stuff that we use in a lot of in a lot of our projects for page transitions and interactivity. Um, as well as like a basic uh, SaaS setup um, and using some of our own tools for that as well. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely some opinionated stuff in here, but um, like you could just as easily just delete those files and start from scratch um, however you'd like. Um, when there's so, so many, so many yeah, good wrote, starters wrote, out there that like are opinionated, there's nothing wrong with having a strong opinion in your code. I feel like that's a best practices right. kind of thing sometimes too. Yeah, totally. It just like, I've like over time like figured out like what is actually useful to me to have out of the box. And so that's sort of what I've done here. Excellent. And really to get started with Sanity, you, all you need to do is paste your project ID and data set 
into these files and like make sure that you're all up to date um, and then you're ready to go and you can just run these commands to start nice. the front end and the Sanity Studio. And Canoe just mentioned in chat also that we're working on some tools so that uh, people can actually ship their own community starters to that slash create on Sanity.io. So that's, that's coming oh, as well. Oh, that's amazing. That's going to be super fun to, to get a lot of like, community interaction with. Seriously. Yeah, I love that idea. Yeah, so I think that's really about it here. I mean, this is this is open public on our GitHub at Self Aware, so feel free to check it out and definitely use it. Hit me up with any questions about it. Um, really love this combo. It's been super empowering to work with. Awesome. So I want to make sure there's there's time for some questions. So if you have any questions about the setup, about uh, what Mike and Self Aware are doing. Uh, Put them in chat. I also put in chat the uh, the GitHub repository that we're looking at right now, so you can definitely check that out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our chat view. Hey, big faces again. We're we're back fully on screen. Um, so while we're waiting on any questions, I do want to say thank you so much for coming on today, Mike. Uh, this is the first time that I'm doing this for Sanity, and hopefully this is gonna be bigger and doing more later on. And hopefully the next time it'll be audio and both headphones for everyone who's listening to me talk right now. Uh, working out the bugs, so I appreciate you being my test case here today. Uh, and, totally. and where can people find you? Where can people find Self Aware? Shameless plug yourself here, real fast. Yeah, sure. Um, I think the best place is just to dive into our website, selfaware.studio. Nice. Self. I'm gonna put that in chat as well. Aware.studio. Um, cool. And, and I'm gonna. Yeah, the GitHub is. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. The GitHub is slash Self Aware Studio. Very nice. It's all lowercase note underscores or anything and obviously um, Mike is hanging out in the in the slack community for uh, for sanity as well sanity uh, slack dot sanity dot io you can sign up you can get involved there ask questions of Mike or of the sanity team the devrels the engineers we're all we're all just hanging out Peter our awesome community engineer is super helpful in the help channel I'm trying to be helpful in the help channel so hopefully that will also ramp up uh, in the coming weeks as well. I'm not getting any questions. So I think you did a great job explaining everything. They don't have any questions perhaps. Um, cool. So cool. Uh, Mike, again, thanks for being on with us today. Uh, and hopefully we'll be doing more of these in the future. So if you want to do a community showcase, come on into that Slack, post in the I Made This channel, talk to me, talk to Kapehe, talk to Knut. We're all in there hanging out. Come, come hang out with us as well. So cool, I'm gonna go ahead and say thank you everyone for tuning into the stream today. Again, thank you, Mike, for being on. And, uh, and we'll see you all next time around on the next stream. And Mike, we'll see you in the community. Thanks so much.